talked about what's going on as far as the world of sports is concerned. Eddie Erickson and Colin Schmeling in house today. Billy Z, welcome Father Rob back from the uh, disastrous confines of Rapid City he has returned to the Big Apple, his home where he wants to be. So we say hello uh, to Rob and go to Bonnie. So uh, as we chat to you about what's cooking on this busy afternoon, uh, Triple Eight Mad Dog Six on the two way, on the great Sirius XM 82 at your two way sports talk telephone number. As we take you home here on a busy afternoon, we're going to have the Marshall coach on a little later on. That is Mike D'Antoni's brother, Dan D'Antoni. We'll enjoy that. We are going to talk to Vic Carucci on the Bills. He shortly. We'll look forward to that as well. And Larry Scott, the commissioner of the Pac-12 on USC and his own recommendations as far as what they should do in the NCAA, clean up the mess. So we'll have some fun things here to do on this busy day as we chat to you about what's cooking as far as the world of sports is concerned. NCAA, two games tonight. I think LAU Radford's the first one, right? Or is it the other? Is it LAU Radford? That's the first one. And then UCLA and St. Bonnie's. Uh, that's at 9 10 tonight. Those two games, first four in Dayton. And we'll get a little sense of what's going on there. So we got a couple things happening on this busy day. We have obviously first four today, first four tomorrow. The tournament will begin on Thursday, 12 uh, 15, with uh, balls up. We'll talk to Bob Wenzel. Robert will come by. Probably put him on tomorrow for a few minutes if he's back in town. But if not, We'll make sure he's with us here 3 to 7 uh, as uh, Left Coast Live will give us an hour there so we can do that last game for you, which begins at 4.30. 3 to 7 on Thursday and Friday right here on uh, Sirius XM. Steve is on his way to Vegas. He can bet his $12.50 on the LIU over tonight and get himself organized. So we won't see Steve now for a while as we chat to you about what's cooking as far as the world of sports is concerned. We're going to turn our attention though, for a little while at least here uh, to the NFL a lot of quarterbacks have moved around today. Bradford, Arizona. Uh, Case Keenum, the Denver, as you know. Maybe Teddy Bridgewater, the Jets. Uh, that's out there right now. I'm not sure if I love that. Uh, but the biggest issue and the biggest move is made by Minnesota, uh, which signs Kirk Cousins. They give him about $88, $89 million, all guaranteed. Now, a lot of people are making a big deal about being an all-guaranteed. Most of the time, that's not guaranteed. These uh, no, no None of these contracts are. Uh, for instance, Breeze signed a two-year. A $50 million deal with New Orleans and only $27 million of that is guaranteed. So they gave Cousins all guaranteed to go to Minnesota. So they spent a ton of money on him and away we go. He's their quarterback. I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a stupid move by the Vikings. To me, there was no reason for them to do this. Uh, I think it was a very poor decision. I, I really do. I'm surprised they made it. Last year they came within an eyelash of uh, playing in a Super Bowl. That was not Case Keenan's fault. Now, he wasn't great in the game. But that was not Case Keenan's fault by any stretch of the imagination in Philadelphia on Championship Sunday. Uh, now, he was bad. He made some big mistakes. But that defense was, they were not winning that game if United played. Otto Graham didn't make any difference. And he took him to the uh, postseason. He had a great year. Think about it for a second. Case Keenum has won more playoff games in his career than Kirk Cousins has. Yet they gave Cousins 80-something, $90 million guaranteed. I, I don't understand it. I, I really don't. I give Cousins a little credit for picking. Minnesota because that's a high pressure situation now. Same division as Aaron Rodgers. Obviously the Vikings have never won a Super Bowl. Uh, there's going to be a lot of expectations on them going to such a good team. They played in a championship game last year so anything short of that looks bad. So Cousins took a step. So I, I will give him, I give him a little credit for that. He could have taken the easy way out and taken the $80 million from Arizona, taken the $80 million from the Jets and nobody would have said boo but he took it from a team that's already pretty good uh, which can go two ways. One, he knows that uh, he's got a chance to win a championship. But two, if he plays lousy off last year, he's going to look bad. So he took a chance. I give him credit for that. But I don't understand what Minnesota is up to. I, I, I really don't. I just don't get the idea that why Minnesota, uh, that is not a co- – I know they play in a dome, but it's a, he's a defensive-oriented coach. They have the running back out of Florida State coming back notwithstanding last year's effort against Philadelphia or five weeks ago in the championship game. They do have a good defense. Uh, I, I don't know why they spent $30 million on a quarterback. I, I just I don't see it. I think it's a bad decision. They had three quarterbacks. It's funny about Minnesota. They had three quarterbacks they have worked with in the last three years, and they won with all three of them. At Bridgewater, they won. They won a, game, they won a playoff game with Keenan, and Bradford had some good moments. So, uh, to me, I don't understand why in the world they feel they had to go out there and go get themselves a high-priced guy who has never, ever, 
ever distinguished himself in a big spot. Plus, Jay Gruden got him out of there in Washington, and they decided to go to Alex Smith without missing a beat. So I just don't quite get it. I, I you know, this is not a that is not. A, I know it's a quarterback important. I know it's we all know how important the quarterbacks are in the NFL. I get that, but this is that is not a quarterback uh, inclusive team. The coach is a defensive oriented coach who believes in Parcells' system, run the ball and play defense. He does not believe in throwing the ball all over the place. Uh, I am very, very surprised. Uh, I really am. Um, I thought Elway, I thought Arizona. I don't know why he'd ever go to the Jets, so he didn't. But I did not think that he would necessarily go to Minnesota. Now, Minnesota, um, I really shouldn't say from Cousins' perspective. I mean it more from Minnesota's perspective. I don't understand. They had three quarterbacks on the roster. I Bridgewater's major injury and everything else. Keenan, they were a little nervous about. And Bradford's always hurt. I get it. But this is not a big upgrade. It's not like they, they, he is not the missing piece to a championship. That's the problem. I mean, when you make that kind of move, you make that kind of move because that is the missing piece to winning it all. You need a quarterback to win that kind of game. You know, like Kansas City, for instance, a perfect example. That's not the scenario here with the, with the Vikings. They almost won last year. They, they came up with a lousy game at the wrong time. All right. Against a team that was due. All right. A franchise that was due. Okay. You know, you roll up your sleeves, you shake it off, and you go back after it next year and you get home field. I mean, I, I, I don't. And, and your answer here is to bring in a guy making $30 million a year who's never won a postseason game in his life. Who, by the way, when he's had some big spots in the last couple of years, has stuck up the joint. Anybody forget about the Carolina game on Monday night a couple of years ago when he couldn't get out of his own way? Fumbled the ball all over the place? Or did anybody remember the game against Green Bay where Rodgers outshot him in a playoff game? Or anybody remember the game last year against the Giants? Weeks 17, the Giants playing for absolutely nothing in the playoffs as a wild card team, and the Redskins had a win to get in, and he basically threw an interception, left and right, and scored three points. I mean, my goodness gracious, I, I don't quite, I don't understand it. I, I don't like the move at all. Now, I understand why Arizona did what they did. Arizona right now, you know, with Bradford, they hope he's healthy. Arizona, from a standpoint of where they are in the draft, Arizona, you know, picks uh, number 15, so unless they go crazy with trades, they're not going to go out there and go get themselves the quarterback. I understand what they did. The Jets, uh, you know, I don't know if this precludes them from drafting one, but the Jets take a chance at Bridgewater. They got McCown still sitting there. It sounds like the Jets are going to get Bridgewater. It hasn't been announced yet, but that was the rumor, at least. Let's assume that might happen. Uh, I can understand, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not awful with that either. Keep the sixth pick. Do what you want to do. I'd like to see the Jets come up with a better player than Bridgewater. I'm not sure about him. To me, I wasn't sure about him before the injury, so I'm not so sure about him after the injury, but I, you know, I can understand why the Jets, it's a small risk. Give him a small term contract, him and McCown. We'll see how it works itself out. But I'm very, very surprised by the Vikings. I, I really am. Um, I'm surprised that Minnesota did this. I think it's a very poor decision. I'm going to say it right now. And again, Unless Cousins win a, wins a Super Bowl, it, to me, it's you know that's the bottom line. I mean, he has to lead them out of a championship because they were they already played in the NFC Championship game. So if he has a great season, you know, fifty touchdowns and five interceptions, and then lays an egg in a playoff game, who cares? They spent the thirty million and won a championship, and I don't know where Cousins has ever proved that he can do that in his in his career. He's never proved it, never. Hey, take the money. It's all guaranteed. He's getting, uh, you know, Doug Baldwin, you know, tweeting. This is great. He led the, all the players because he got guaranteed money. Nothing is uh, bonuses. And, you know, uh, like Breeze, $27 million guaranteed. This is, nine, this is a $90 million. So from that standpoint, fine. Uh, you know, the Redskins felt, uh, I guess the Vikings felt for three years they can keep him healthy. $30 million a year, he'd be all right. He'd be 33 years of age. But I, I don't understand it. I really don't. I don't understand what Minnesota's up to. I know they don't. I know they don't pick until you know pick thirty-eight or something. Whatever. No, I'm sorry. They pick. Uh, I'll tell you exactly when they pick. They pick thirty. But I mean, I don't. A uh, little surprised. Now, as far as the rest of the moves that have been made, I like what Buffalo has done. Uh, you know, Buffalo has put themselves in a situation right now. They got two second-round picks. They're going to bring the defensive lineman in from. From uh, Carolina, they brought Kyle Williams back. They're bringing in the big defensive lineman, giving him a five-year deal from Carolina to build their front four. They got to put a good defense anyway. 
Uh, so they're going to edify that some. They got rid of Tyrod Taylor. They saved themselves some money. I don't have any issues with that whatsoever. Now, they have procured themselves uh, some extra picks. They have also put themselves in a situation where they moved up in the draft. That was a good trade they made with Cincinnati. I'm not that familiar with the left tackle. Uh, you know, They have another guy there in Buffalo who can play the position. We know that Cincinnati had major issues along the offensive line. Whitworth went to the Rams, and they couldn't protect Dalton. So I can understand why they may have wanted to move down 10 spots if you're the Bengals. Uh, the fact of the matter is they're going to live and die with Dalton, so they're not going to move up to get a QB. They were going to sit at 12. They figured they couldn't get a great lineman at 12. Maybe they make a trade for a lineman and move back 10 spots, not the end of the world. So I don't have an issue with Cincinnati, uh, and I think Buffalo did the right thing. Uh, Buffalo now has two number one picks, 12 and 22. Again, they have the second round picks. I'll give you the numbers there in a second if you want to know what numbers they are in the second round. Buffalo has uh, the 60. They have a third round pick Six, they have 65, and they have 56, 53. So they have five picks in the first 65 picks of the draft. That's a lot. Five. The Browns, by the way, have, let's look at them. The Browns in the first round, they have the first pick, they have the fourth pick. The Browns have the 33rd pick. 35th pick, that's four. And the Browns have the 64th pick is five. And the Browns have one more, I believe. Uh, No, that's it. They got five. So the Browns have five picks in the top 64. Buffalo has five picks in the top 65. I think Buffalo did the right thing. And I think if they maneuver, they can figure out a way to put themselves in a... In an issue, uh, in a run for the QB. I think the Browns are taking Barkley. Uh, I think he's going to be their first pick. I think the Giants then will have a um, will have a decision to make about what they want to do with the quarterback spot. I do think they're going to take one. They can wax poetic on Eli, Pat Shermer, and Dave Gutterman until the cows come home. Bottom line is he has not been good in the last two seasons, and he's 37 years of age. They don't seem to love Davis Webb. If Davis Webb was so good, he would have beaten out Geno Smith, and he would have played in the last four or five games of the year. So, uh, and you would have. Th- they would have been so good in the practice field, they would have had to get him into a game. So I think they will draft one with that second pick. I think Buffalo now easily can move up to number three. Uh, I don't know what the Colts are going to do uh, with that spot. It sounds like they love the NC State kid, defensive lineman. We know they're not going to draft a quarterback. Uh, if you're a Buffalo, that is the spot you got to go. You can't go to five because, you know, you could get burned there. Somebody goes to three and you're left with Baker Mayfield. You have to be in a situation where you give yourself a chance to get one of those three guys I'm going to put Mayfield a little below that right now, uh, but Rosen, Allen, or Don- or Donald. And I think Buffalo has put themselves in that spot. So I like what Buffalo has done. I do not like what Minnesota's done. I understand Arizona take a chance, one-year run. Maybe Bradford can stay healthy. It's a guy who's never healthy, and that's the biggest issue. And they played really well last year, but he just is never healthy. So if he's ever healthy, and the Jets with Bridgewater, I guess you can say it's worth a shot. I guess you could say it's worth a shot. The Jets are in a weird spot. If they do bring Bridgewater in, does that mean they keep McC- M- the uh, McNown? Do they, what do they do with him? They keep him? I don't know. Uh, if they keep him, then what are they going to do at six? Do you have another quarterback? 17 and a half the hour. Get your calls in. Man, do go. 